such so people that claim that AI yeah, will have emotions. One of the books that I read about consciousness talks about how we have perception and we have experience, and that consciousness requires both of these pieces. So for instance, I have a car. My car has sensors on it. I get in a wreck, it deploys airbags. Like, the car perceives a wreck occurred. But if you and I run into each other headlong, like, our experience of wrecking is very different than two machines hitting each other. Both of us perceive But I guess, I guess my counter-argument would be, how do you know that I experienced it? And that's, that's the gap of, of consciousness. If I believe you're conscious, you believe I'm conscious, but we can't prove it per se. Um, so therefore, how can we disprove it? And if we can't disprove it, how can we disprove that AI is not conscious? I don't think you entirely can. I don't think anybody has solved that problem. And that's one of the reasons why I think it's, it's way premature to say, well, then computers will become conscious. Well, you don't even know what consciousness is. right? You don't know what the experience is. Are emotions physical or are they non-physical? Well, there's certainly a physical component to it. We know that mm -hmm. in looking at neuroscience and so on. But is that the entirety of it? Right? And so you get into some, some weird things as you go down this, like organ transplants and people that have you know, um, heart transplants then start having cravings that the person they got it from you know, had and they never even liked this food before. And it's like, well, is this just anecdotal? I mean, because there's, there's tons of stories of that. It's hard to kind of set up a a double blind study with people with and without heart transplants to you know really nail that one down but most people have seen or heard of certain things like that that don't quite add up um the better ones i think are near-death experiences those ones i think are really interesting because the common argument against it is you can take hallucinogenic drug and lsd whatever and you can have this auto out of body experience but near-death experience by definition is when your brain is not working like literally an mri there's no activity well, that's not the case when you take the hallucinogen. Your brain is very active. And so show me how that experience can happen without an active brain. That's, that's interesting. Another study was done specifically with blind people. Some were born blind. Some uh, became blind over their lifetime, had an early experience and could see what was going on in the room, could see people outside the room, could describe these things, come back from the dead. Their brain wasn't active and they still couldn't see. It's like, show me the mushroom that can do that. <laughs> right so there's these gaps in what we think uh, the machine will be able to do versus humans and we don't know why now could there be a scientific explanation of that i mean there could be but it's it would not be nailed down to specifically what's in the brain which all neural networks are based on the way the brain works i just a phallus patient so these are people that have um, their brain replaced by cerebrospinal spinal fluid so instead of having all of the folds in their brain, they have like a real thin, um, some of the more extreme cases, it could be only be a couple millimeters thick. So it's like 95%, 98% of their brain is just fluid. And there was an example of one of these, Professor John Lorber did research on this um, before he passed away, uh, where he had a student at his university was doing research that had this condition and 97.4% of his brain was fluid. Hmm. Um, and yeah, he had 126 IQ. Now, to be clear, the majority of people in these situations are severely disabled. But the fact that there's physically even one or exception mentally. tells me there's something more than the brain here. There's something more than physical wiring, at least that we're aware of. Certainly, I mean, science is what we're open to. I would be open to, okay, well, let's, let's find the physical explanation of that. But that would be, like, imagine what that would be. If you knew what that was and it's not the brain, it's not the neural networks, how much more advanced could AI come from that capability? But our best understanding is something outside of the physical realm. And then that gets back to the moral aspect of it, right? So do you see it as AI will perpetually keep pushing, pushing, pushing on maybe intelligence, but it will never kind of span that gap that makes humans humans and really achieve consciousness? Yeah, so there's, there's two levels to that. So one's the moral aspect of it, but the other would be the, the physical. Machines are way more intelligent than humans. Like, I think it's an interesting argument that it's like, well, wait till they're more intelligent than humans or wait till they're super intelligent. It's like, I, I've never beat World of Warcraft. The thing's way smarter than I am, right? Like, <laughs> I can't beat a, a chess game. Uh, I, I'm a mechanical engineer. Like, what the CAD can do and computational fluid dyna dynamic systems and so on. Like, try, try to do that by hand, all that, those calculations. They're, they're way beyond us, Right. So the argument that all of a sudden they're more intelligent, I find to be an interesting one. The only thing they're now more intelligent is, is they've decoded human language, mm -hmm. right? But in mathematics and engineering, they've been 
better than us for quite a long time. So, okay, they just keep getting better and better at human language. Like, so what? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. So you just see it as a progression of of what machines and technology have already done, but there's no major step forward and 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 kind of even the the concept. And correct me if I'm I'm saying this incorrectly, but the concept even of AI being something pushing towards intelligence is, is just flawed. It's just technology doing what technology does best, which is being really good at things and are no, really intelligent. No, so I would say it differently. It is intelligent. I have no problem saying it's intelligent. It's super intelligent, right? But intelligence is not the defining characteristic of humanity. If intelligence is the defining mm -hmm, characteristic mm -hmm. of humanity, then if I am mentally incapable, I now have less value. Right. Right? right? Like that is a serious problem. And if you're listening to this and you think, no, that's normal, we should just get rid of everybody that has a mental handicap. Um, the world gets to be a dark place really fast. Right? Yeah. And we, we've seen this play out in history. Like every human has unique worth. If you enjoyed that clip, there is much more of that conversation. Make sure to check out the full interview where we get into so much more. And if it was helpful, click the like and subscribe button. If not, no worries. Hopefully I'll convince you next time. I hope you have a wonderful day and enjoy wherever you are.